Every morning when the day's begun, I thank the Lord for all He has done. Every evening when I kneel to pray, I thank the Lord for another day. Thank you for the sun, my Lord. Thank you for the moon. Thank you for the day and night, morning and afternoon. Every morning when the day's begun, I thank the Lord for all He has done. Every evening when I kneel to pray, I thank the Lord for another day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us continue to pray for people who are affected by this pandemic and as many of them have started doing their regular works, people started going for their jobs and a lot of things are happening as it would happen on normal days. We, should, we need to also pray in a very special way for safety of people because there is a lot of mobility. Let us pray that the Lord may preserve, safeguard every one of us. At the same time, he might inspire people to come out with the right vaccines as early as possible and put an end to this whole pandemic and bring the much needed normalcy. For the times we have lived our life as if we were right all the time, Let's feel sorry and ask the Lord's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. First reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 and 14 to 17. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions 
that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Let your response be, The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say to the nations, The Lord is King. The world He made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Your response? Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all its bears joy rejoice. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Your response? Then will all the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice. He will govern the peoples with his truth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Your response? Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word of God is living and active, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 23, verses 23 to 26. At that time, Jesus said, O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides straining out and not and swallowing a camel. O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, the Gospel today sounds very strong, but we should also see this whole of this chapter, Matthew 23, has a series of um, O's. There are seven O's which Jesus pronounced against the Pharisees and the scribes. Again, uh, we should not also misunderstand um, a kind of anti-Jewish kind of a treatment of St. Matthew, which sometimes even the Christians have um, extensively used for uh, uh, wrongly quoting uh, and sometimes even creating a kind of a um, not so good feeling with the Jews. It is not exactly uh, Jesus was attacking the Jew, Jewish community because all the people who were following him, most of them, and he also was traveling with very close friends, disciples who were also Jews. So, he, it was not a kind of a, um, uh, um, a leveling criticism against a community or something. It is actually Jesus Christ is only trying to find, trying to find, the, the, find out the, the, the mistakes and try to correct the people who are in authority and they would not agree to him. 
and he lists seven types of woes. And dear friends, all of us have a similar mentality that Jesus' woes were only uh, applicable to the Pharisees and the scribes, which is not the case. Any one of us who has, has been uh, invested, invested with the power to be in authoritative position can have this danger. We really need to check time and again, am I yielding into this kind of a temptation which the Pharisees and the scribes of those days uh, fell? So we, I would like to quickly give you all the seven types of woes and why Jesus really pronounced it and the lesson that we can take home for today instead of actually all the time finding fault with the Pharisees and scribes who lived years back. The first uh, kind of woe is actually Jesus condemns the teaching of the Pharisees and the scribes which is actually makes it virtually impossible for people to enter into a relationship with God. Every rule should lead people into a good relationship. And so the law which Moses gave, all this law should take people to God and make them enter into a wonderful relationship with God. But what really happened is the Pharisees and scribes were so much taken up with their own scrupulous actions. People were only trying to imitate their, imitate their scrupulous action and it was actually preventing people from entering into a relationship with God. So this is what is the first O. Oh, Jesus is against this whole scrupulous action which was preventing people from entering into relationship. And the second type of, uh, uh, the second woe is, uh, it refers to the traveling of the Jewish community to various people who were into the diaspora and try to preach the law and actually create burden for the Gentile community because they have to become, they were so much obsessed with the law, there was no real relationship happening with people and invariably if you see the Gentiles who are completely alien to this whole Jewish tradition to enter into a relationship with God, it becomes virtually impossible which means the Gentiles will be shut out of the kingdom. So Jesus was against this whole prevention of Gentiles entering into the kingdom. So he pronounces that wow and if you read through you will understand. I, I would suggest all of us go through this whole chapter of uh, Matthew 23. Third type of third wow is uh, he, he calls them as blind guides because he very clearly says you are the ones who need guidance. You are all the time giving guidance. That's what I, 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 I really believe on this. We are good in counseling people. We are giving and advising. We are good in advising people. All that is fine. But very many times, we are the ones who really need counseling. We are the ones who really need guidance. We are the ones who really need advice. But we don't want to accept that all the time. We give it for the others. So Jesus says, you yourself are blind. And how are you going to guide the others? And both of you are going to fall. So it's a kind of... Um, an, an attitude of all the time trying to help others instead of getting receiving help which, which has got a lot to do with pride and humility which we have dealt sufficiently. And um, the fourth vow is against, again is the scrupulosity of, of following the law about the, which would be very much directly linked with our gospel text. Um, uh, paying tithes, one tenth, of course the reference here is uh, whatever you are, you are able to produce from your field the grains, you are supposed to give one tenth of your income, your proceeds. But you know how the Pharisees and scribes, they extended it, it to so far that people were even expecting like even some herbs that they were planting in the garden back, back at, uh, at the back of the house. Even for that they were demanding one tenth of the tithe which really was a big burden and very, very interesting we see. Neglecting the fact that they were supposed to follow justice, faithfulness and, 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 and love, you, you leave all these important aspects and start holding on to this one tenth uh, tithe and extend it to even things which were not actually demanded by law. It is very interesting today, it's, it is said it is a kind of a pun that Jesus uses for the insect and the camel which has got almost a similar uh, uh, word, uh, but he says, you are taking away the small insect from, the, from your drink because it is unclean while you eat a camel, which is again unclean. 
So, you feast on a camel, but you are so scrupulous about an insect. Again, it says it is a kind of a pun, it is a kind of a dig that he takes on the, on the Pharisees. It simply says you are so scrupulous about the law, but you are not really following the law. So, that was the fourth law, woe war, war was against that. And fifth woe was, was against the ritual purity. Again, ritual purity, which was meant for the priestly tradition, people are trying to extend it to the rest of the people also and try to create burden for them. Sometimes it can even happen. People who are supposed to follow certain certain rules, certain certain ritual uh, laws and regulations, sometimes we extend it to everyone else. Just because we, it, it is a kind of a demanding stuff that is happening for us, we should not also burden the rest of the people. So, what is more important is purity of heart. Do not worry about uh, so scrupulous uh, about other external purity, the ritual purity. Of course, people who are expected to follow it, we need to follow it. Let us not extend it to every one of them. And the sixth woe is again the same concern about ritual purity, which talks about the whitewashed tombs. Of course, the tombs are whitewashed before big festivals, so that people will be careful not to touch the white, whitewashed tombs, because it is going to uh, bring in defilement and they have, they have to be um, away from their community for seven days. Jesus says, yeah, you all look very, very stylish, you all look very elegant, like whitewashed tombs, because it looks very uh, new, renewed, everything is fine. But what is inside is all bones, all dirt, all worms. Sometimes our life can be also externally we are perfect, but within four walls we live a life which is miserable. We need to really work on our own, our own lives. And finally, the fifth, the seventh was against how the Pharisees honor so much about the prophets and the people who lived before. But if you see, they are persecuted invariably everyone. So, very many times we talk very highly about our history, but when it comes to everyday reality, we would be actually doing the opposite. So, Jesus says, you are praising prophets, but you are never treated anyone and, and which means they are also not, they are not even able to recognize the son of man and they are persecuting him. But they always take pride in saying, we have always treated prophets so well, but Jesus co condemns and says, name one prophet whom have we treated. So, dear friends, if you see these seven woes, if you go through them carefully one by one, everything points towards us, especially the ones who have power, who have authority in, in some, some degree, in some level. So, instead of all the time identifying Jesus' criticisms, you know, everything was for the Pharisees and scribes, we are the Pharisees and scribes in some way or other. Just let us go through them one by one and see how self-righteous we are very many times and we live a very hypocritical life, which is simply a kind of a show and acting in front of others, yes, but fine, we, we might do a lot of acting, but personally we need to also work on our own selves, eventually whatever all the bad things that are going on within, all the worms, all the dirt that is within ourselves, we are able to identify, accept and throw them out. I think Jesus, instead of giving these woes, he would only bless us abundantly. Let us pray together. O Lord Jesus, just as Simon helped you to carry your cross, we pray for protection and grace for all medical professionals all over the world who are courageously treating those infected with coronavirus. May they be shielded, strengthened and guided as they administer healing treatments and care. This we ask for your love's sake. Amen. Take our bread, we ask you take our hearts. We love you, take our lives. Oh Father, we are yours. We are yours. Let's sorry Lord God of all creation. For three years we have been as we bread. stand at the table, you said. Yours as we eat the bread our hearts can't forget We are the signs of your life with us yet We are yours, we are yours Take our bread, 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George Anthony Samia, Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the service command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.